the kid, young Cooter, man. This is Player Talk Radio, man. This is the infamous show that you've been hearing about lately, man. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff today, man. We're going to talk about this Philando case, man. And we're going to get into the aspects of qualification today. Today is going to be a really deep show, man. Let's get into it, man. Shout out to my boy, The After Party, man. We're going to get into a cut right now before we get into the show. And we're going to get into the mix, man. So, look, shallow and light. Let's get it. I think you're confused by what we have It's easy for me to forget uh-huh. There was words I never said uh-huh. I like a shallow and light I like to cover with the sprite I like it more than you and I I like a shallow and light I don't need the night I don't want another fight We can both agree you're right Oh, let's just move on, leave behind Everything that I said to you When I was full of my Xanax Wasn't a single word I meant I wish that I could remember No, this was never planned How colder than the winter I never meant to be like this I know that I was raised better I've been bobbing all this shit, pills that I can't pronounce uh, Blowing IBM lines, I feel a lot better now uh, If you call my phone at four, I'll be throwing it out yeah. Just like I'm throwing you out Twenty for the bill, how to spend my heart check I think you're confused by what I said It's easy for me to forget uh-huh. Yeah, those words I never said uh-huh. I like a shallow and light I like the cup with the Sprite I like it more than you and I I like a shallow and light I like a shallow and light I like the cup with the Sprite I like it more than you and I I like a shallow We are in the mix today, man. We are in the goddamn mix today. What is good? It's the kid, young cooler. Definitely back on the motherfucking ones and twos, man. You know how I do. Hold on. We know how I do it, man. <clears throat> so today we got a show for you guys, man. We're gonna get into a little bit of this Philando shit, and then we're gonna get into the mix, and then we're gonna get into today's topic of tonight's show, which is I get my today's and tonight's mixed up, but which is qualification, man. We're going to get to qualification. We're going deeper on the progression model, man. Um, I want to give an apology to my uh, Facebook fans and my um, my YouTube fans. My YouTube fans are bigger than my Facebook fans. I love my YouTube fans. Love y'all. Much love. Much love. Y'all show me way more love. But um, multi-platform, nigga. Multi-platform. Sorry, now. But what I wanted to um, say is um, the last video that I put out, I put out a video yesterday, which was a pre-show for today. But, you know, it kind of got, you know, fucking UMG doing some dumb shit. So, you know, we're going we gonna to get up with them, man. We're going to get up with them, man. That mix was, you know, pretty good, man. Yesterday we had a great show. So I'm going to make sure that content is available for you guys online. So, you know what I'm saying. Huh? Shit happens. Okay, so, um... We're gonna get to today's show, man. Let's play it to our radio, man. So, you know, let's get it. You're now in the mix with the young DJ Kuda. Tonight we gonna be going in. All the boys and the boys and shoes. Let's get it. On Player Talk Radio. Goddamn, goddamn. Oh, man, goddamn. So, yeah. So, um, let's scroll over to Facebook real quick. Now, Y'all don't like to listen when a black man talks. It's this, and I can break this this game down. This is hereditary in in in, in black nature and black society. I can break this down in the black community. 
You don't listen when a black man says something by by nature. This is this is what was bred into us by nature. You will not listen. You will not listen when a black man is saying something. This is why I'm gonna have a hard time with the show. But I'm getting some points right now. You dig what I'm saying? You will not listen when a black man is telling you something. But if a white man is telling you something, you will listen. And you will have more of an ear to what he's saying than what a nigga is saying. This was bred into us. So I'm gonna we're gonna do some shows going over that, but we're not gonna do that right now. So let's talk. This is my first time hearing it also. This is a white man talking about the Philando, you know, shooting. And um, he said he was lynched because the only reason that he was, you know, only seen as a criminal. So, you know what I'm saying? We're going we gonna, to we gonna get into this clip and then, you know, we're going to get into the game today. So let's, let's listen to this clip real quick. Hold on. Let me run it back. It's not. Let me run it back. Dixon back to talk to my people one more time. All right, let's listen. talking to you guys via video, white people that is, for, I don't know, over two years now. I started April 2015. And I'm still talking to y'all. And you're still not listening. I've had a few emails where people said that it made a difference. So I don't know. I know that a few of my videos went viral and it reached a lot of people. So I hope that. I remember him too. I I don't know if white people are learning or not. I I don't know. I don't see any change in America. I, I just see, like the elders used to say, the more things change, the more things stay the same. Um, I'm making this video because um, I'm thinking about the injustice that was done to uh, Philando Castile and his family and his girlfriend and I'm thinking how can um, an officer who walked up to an innocent black guy and shot him four times in the chest simply because he reached for his wallet it was seven be times. Justified so. as not manslaughter, got hit as in the not murder. Too, How can that happen? Well, it happens because the truth and the reality is the Justice Department is and always has been white supremacist, and the police can and do murder daily with complete same thing I be saying immunity, and they know that but let a white man tell you that is why they do it the laws are there because y'all will take it more before you you take it from what but I'm white saying America let's go let's the kid, they see cool. these injustices toward people of color and they continue to do what they've always done since we uh, started the indigenous holocaust since we started the uh, black holocaust with the enslavement the Jim Crow the redlining the mass incarceration all the fucking shit we've done to people of color. They always do the same thing. It's what white America does best. Turn the other cheek, sweep it under the fucking carpet, pretend it's not there. Turn the blind eye. Deny it. Defend white, white people. Deny our system and culture of white supremacy. Deny our white privilege. Deny the injustice. Deny the... Uh, disenfranchising that happens to people of color deny it all but the fact remains because of our society when that cop walked up to Philando and you can hear the fear in his voice when that cop walked up to Philando Castile an innocent black guy minding his own damn business simply trying to show the guy his ID complying that cop was so fucking scared. Now, why was he scared? The same reason all white people are taught to fear people of color. We're taught stereotypes. We've always been taught to stereotypes. So when that cop walked up to Philando, he saw that black guy, that innocent black guy is a criminal. Nothing more than that. Just an angry black man, criminal. And that was it. And he knew in his heart that Philando was a criminal. He knew in his heart, in his sick, twisted mind, that Philando was going to kill him. So he shot before he had any proof. He just shot him dead in cold blood. This some deep Why? shit. Deep shit because right he here. had bought into the lie of white supremacy. This is the deep truth shit. as to why Philando is dead. This officer had bought into the lie of white supremacy as our whole entire nation has, as all police officers have. 
most of them. Certainly their culture is white supremacist. It always has been. So what you have now is lynchings happening daily in America and our justice system and the laws in our justice system there to support it. And now we have this fucking Jeff Sessions guy, the, the, the department of, head of the Department of Justice, who is a known white supremacist, who's an old school Confederate loving, old school Confederate loving, redneck, country ass, backward ass, racist, white supremacist motherfucker who is here and in place that Donald Trump put him in place for one reason, to continue mass incarceration, to continue the disenfranchisement of black people, to continue the brutalization, to continue the lynching, and to continue the harassment, the marginalization of people of color. That is why Jeff Sessions is in place. That is why the white supremacist president put an old school white supremacist motherfucker Confederate loving motherfucker like Jeff Sessions in control of our Justice Department. So here we are. He just hates Jeff and Sessions. And white people like see him. this. They see it in videos now. We have the technology with smartphones showing the injustice. Why people remain silent. They do as their white supremacist training taught them very, very well. Turn a blind eye deny it support white supremacy that's what white people do best they do it by silence they do it by denial and they do it by not doing a goddamn fucking thing facts so I, I don't know what else to say to white people I, I've said all I can say <sighs> but I can tell you this white America people of color are tired of your bullshit and if you don't change your ways, if you can't find a moral compass racially and start to give a fuck about the unjust system of white supremacy in this nation that is operating culturally and systemically, if you can't find in your heart to give a fuck about that and to stand up and to do what's simply decent, there will be a reckoning. What goes around comes around. I don't know what else to say. Yep. Dixon back to talk to me. That was deep. That was pretty deep. That was pretty deep. What are your thoughts on that? You know what I'm saying? Like I, I had to let him do it because if I did it, you know, I wouldn't listen. I love this show. This show is stirring up a lot of controversy. I love this show. I love this show. I really love this show. Mm -mm -mm. Somebody got a dog. Anywho, let's get into today's mix, man. It's the kid, Young Kuda, man. If you have any questions, email me at playertalk8 at gmail.com. I know a lot of y'all are retarded, so that's player talk. The number eight at gmail.com. Let's get into the mix, man. Let's get into the mix.
just being cracked in the head with another DJ Young Cuda exclusive. Why you doing like that, baby?
with Player Talk Radio, man. We are gonna get it tonight, man. Fuck what you talk about. Fuck what they talk about. Fuck what everybody talk about. Let's get it, man. Hold on. Hold on. Let me let me switch it up a little bit. Hold on. Switch it up. Slim says, switch it up. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna switch it up because, <laughs> hey yo, hey they need to, they need to know what be going on around here. All right, we gonna switch it up, man. I'm gonna switch this one up for Slim, man. We throwing it back though. Hold on, it's Thursday, cause let's get it. Let's get it, cause let's get. It. <laughs> Shout out to Slim. Hey, let's get it. Good, it's the kid, young cooter. I'm on time. I'm 25 minutes in. What is good? All right, man. Let's get it. Let's get it, man. Fuck, we talking about, man, on today's show, man. Let's get it. It's the kid, young cooter. If you have any questions, man, email me at playertalk8 at gmail.com. Man. That's playertalk8 at gmail.com. Let's get out the mix and let's get into the game. Let's get into the game, man. We're going to be talking about qualification today. Let's get it.
All right, all right, we are back, man. What is good? We are in the mix, man. All right. We are at spitting altitude, man. We are up, man. What is good? It's the kid, Young Cooter. Definitely back in the building. Back on the ones and twos. This is the Notorious Show. This is the show about notorious dating advice that you can receive, man. We chop up a lot of game on this show. So let's make one thing clear, man. We we talking about qualification today. This is the qualification phase show. If you have your progression level of the six steps that I give you. You know what I'm saying? Niggas giving out Ferraris on this show, man. Of game. The Ferraris of game. Real shit. So let's make one thing clear when we're talking about qualification. Qualification, fellas, this phase, if you got your list that I told you to write down, which is approaching, transition, build, attraction, now you got qualification. Then we're going to talk about building comfort and building seduction. This is the player's model. This is how... This is how you do it. <laughs> Shout out to my boy, Shot Glissy. This is how you do it. I'm telling you, man. Dog, dog, nigga. You... 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 You fuck with this shit, nigga. This is how it goes. This is the wave. This is the wave, man. <laughs> Alright, let's get into it, man. man. We ain't even gonna, we ain't even gonna fuck around with it too much. Let's listen. When you qualify each other, let's make one thing clear. Qualifying is judging. This is where the negotiation and relationships go down, for the most part. So when you're build, when you're, when I was, I was gonna say when you're building, but yeah, when you are building, but when you're dealing. With more business inclined savvy women, women that are in corporate offices and and they driving Mercedes, they riding Bentley, they riding BMW, they doing it. They got a hustle going. When you deal with a business minded woman, this is where the negotiations on relationships go down. Or if you deal with a girl that's about something, you want your girl to be about something. So that bitch better got some, she better got some business savvy to it. Tell y'all niggas to, to 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 fucking reach for these higher bitches, man. Stop reaching for these bottom of the barrel bitches, man. Stop selling your soul for pussy. Stupid nigga. And you dumb as shit to think women don't read this on you, man. Hold on, we gonna cook, we gonna, we gonna, gonna pause this music because niggas about to niggas about to spit. This is where the negotiation and relationships go down, especially on the first date. But in a lot of cases, I told you guys in the beginning of this podcast, not in, not this particular podcast, but if you've been following my shows, you would see you would get that out the way on the first initial meet. So when when you set up a date, she's talking about you for who you are. You already told her when y'all first met. Where you work, what you did, and how you did it. Usually the first date is to figure all of this out. You see what I'm saying? Okay, the first date is a, okay, what am I really dealing with? And that's how you have to carry the shit. So, let's find some spitting music real quick. Let's find some spitting music real quick. Alright, so... We're gonna get into the mix of this game. This is where negotiations and relationships goes down, especially on the first date, man. You don't really wanna be putting too much on you. This is why I tell you to effectively approach and everything, but 
Sometimes your first approach is going to rehash on the first date. You know, people are talking to multiple people. Don't think that you're the only person that this person is talking to, man. When you meet a woman, you better assume that she's dealing with two, three, or more niggas, man. And once you get a taste of assuming some real shit, then you know how to carry your swag with the shit. With this certain type of woman, man. Fuck we talking about. So where the negotiation and relationships go down is, is is especially on the first date or encounter. Not that it means much to everybody, but it does means much to somebody. Get my game where I'm coming with this shit. Which is it going to fall on? People that you date? Or the people that you don't take seriously? It don't have to mean much to everybody, but it does mean much to somebody where you work, how you live, what side of town you stay on. Shit like that. You're getting judged. This is judging. So stop listening to broads be like, I don't judge nobody. No, no, sh- shut up, bitch. You lying. You got to judge somebody to look at their circumstances, not to judge them. See what I mean? Just that expression to you was too complicated for you to decipher. So understand that what I'm talking about is motherfuckers is going to judge. See what I'm saying? Don't take people too seriously, man. Instead, you need to focus, man. Hold on. Check my roller decks. Hold on. We got some shit going on in the chat room. We got some shit going on in the chat room. It's all good, though. So. Let me switch this up. Let me switch this up real quick. So you got to understand, like, not only does it mean much to everybody, but it does mean much to somebody. So, you know what I'm saying? You got to understand, which is going to fall on, man. The people that you date. The ones you don't take seriously. You can smash somebody you don't take seriously. So, you need to be focusing on, you know what I'm saying, these questions that I'm about to pose to you. You know what I'm saying? But, see, you got to understand that somebody, you know... They, it's a lot to explain, man. But you're getting judged on your answers also. Don't think, don't take it too seriously. I gotta tell you how to sidestep all this shit, but don't take it too seriously. I don't mean to frighten you with this shit, but you know, not that it means much to everybody, but it means much to somebody, like I said, which is gonna fall on the people that you date or the people that you don't take seriously. Instead of focusing on how you make them feel, and the things that you do for them and what, you know, experiences that you can provide for them, they're focused on those same questions by answering them with their response. If you're dealing with a businesswoman that's dealing with, you know, that she's looking for a certain criteria of nigga that she's trying to fuck with or deal with. This is why I tell you guys to express yourself in the best light that you can. You got to understand that. um, She, you know, if she's not focused on how you make them, like, it's hard to explain. How do I explain this shit? All right, listen. Because, see, all of this shit is live. I, I This ain't scripted. This is live. <laughs> just, get, just get that straight, first of all. But like I said, instead of focusing on how, you know, they make them, you, you make them feel if they're materialistic. And things that you do for them if they're materialistic. And things, you know, experiences that you can provide for them if they're materialistic. You see that they're not focused on that. But when you look at the other side of the coin, you will understand that they are focused on that. Does that make sense? They're focused on those same questions by asking them 
with their response by answering them with their response. When she answers you with their response, if you're dealing with a materialistic girl, she's focused on how you can make her feel. Even though you made the assumption that she's not focused on how you can make her feel. She's focused on the things that you can do for her. Even though you've made the assumption that she's not focused on the things you can do for her. She's focused on what experiences you can provide her. Even though you think that she's not focused on the experiences that you can provide for her. Financially, nigga. We talking right now. So she is focusing on how you can make her feel, even though she's fucking materialistic. You got to understand how unrealistic she is in her world of being her world that she shows to you. If that makes any sense to you, motherfuckers. It don't make sense to a lot of motherfuckers. But if you listen, it will make sense to a lot of motherfuckers. Just listen to what I'm saying. She's focused on how you can make her feel. She thinks, you know, you have to understand. She thinks that. If you can drive a Honda, you can't make her feel like a man in a Benz field. You understand what I'm saying? Hustle-minded women. But she got to understand, she got to be fearful with that hustle-mindedness. See, I like a hustle-minded woman, but she got to be, she got to be fair with her hustle mindedness this is this is the true indication of the of a hustler of a woman you should be dealing with she's saying yeah a nigga with a honda can't give me experience that a nigga with a benz can give me but i see that he has the potential to get a benz so in reality he can give me the experience that a nigga in a benz can get me and he can actually give me a real experience with a nigga in the Benz can get me because he knew money. He knew hustle. I see his potential. So not only is he going to hustle to get a Benz, nigga, he going to have the 2016. He going to have the 2017. He going to have the 2019. He going to have the 2020. I ain't looking for no regular hustle bitch. I'm looking for the hustle bitch. Come on, man. We fishing. Real talk. So she focusing on how, cause she, cause she, she marginalizing your money, man. For real, where you stay, what type of shit you laying in, how you doing, in life. She looking for something. Talking about women that are seriously about, seriously serious about relationships. So she focused on how you can make her feel and that she thinks that, you know, and some girls are just unrealistic material. I'm just putting both on the table and then we're going we're gonna to go in on both of them. See what I'm saying? So she focusing on how you can make her feel and she thinks that if you drive a Honda, you can make her feel like a man with a Benz. You can't make her feel like a man with a Benz. You can't make her feel how like a man with a Benz makes her feel. So if you have, you know, Target, Walmart, and Macy's money, you can't take you can't take her to shop at Saks Fifth, or Armani Exchange, or Fendi, or Gucci, or Louis, or Prada. You can't take her to these places. See what I'm saying? You can't get her that MCM bag. And what experience could you provide for her? Are you going to the Met Gala with her? Are you riding Bentley to this Met Gala? And can you say, babe, let's go home. And both of y'all are returning to a castle that is that is lined in gold. And you can provide her all the Moet and Vouv Clicquot and Louis Vuitton and, and Chandon. You can, you can bathe this bitch in Cristal. So you have to realize that you're being judged by somebody that is possibly dumb. Real shit. You being judged by a bitch that don't even know what the fuck is from fuck is, bro. Real talk. Real talk. This is how I feel. Fuck it.
You being judged by a dumb broad. And she wants something that she can't even provide for herself. You see, I, you know, sh she don't even understand what it takes to get the things that she asks for. See what I'm saying? She, it, it, it doesn't register in her mind to think like that. Trust me. She wants something she can't even provide for herself. See, I understand what it takes to get these things. But the thing is, is that when you have a broad up here judging you like that, especially on the first date, do you really want to be with somebody like that? See, I tell you guys to think realistic. Be realistic within your standards. Be realistic to understand that this ain't the type of broad for you. Real talk. I'm kicking with I'm kicking it with you, man. It's been 42 minutes, man. You have to understand, you you got friends that don't even kick it with you like this, man. Fuck with me. Do you really want to be around a broad that thinks like that? When you fucked up, can this broad pay your bills? Can she write the checks? Can she do shit for you? I mean, smash them, but, you know, long term, do you really want to be around with somebody like that? If she bad and she thinks like this, nigga, you smash her and then move on. See, the thing about sex is no matter who it is and how it went down, if you smashed somebody once, nigga, in a lifetime you had them. We thinking deep. We not thinking that stupid shit you thinking. In a lifetime, you had them. Don't get wrapped up on that. You had them. I'm dropping shit in my office, nigga. The shit real. <laughs> the game real, nigga. You had them. No matter what the circumstances was, you had them. This is what's called the original shot. You had your shot at them. Anything else is your discretion, nigga. Shit. So, fellas. That's why you find yourself in an awkward situation. You know, in this game, you will find yourself in a situ... Ooh, nigga burping. You find yourself in a situation where you get the girl, but you miss the bitch. I've been in this situation a good amount of times. Keeping it a thou wow with you, man. I've been in this situation where, and, and, and they, oh man, they be, they be bad too, man. But I'm in a great situation right now. I'm in a great situation right now. I love where I'm at right now. But we can talk about my past a little bit. I've been in a good situation. Where I was with a girl and she's bad. Like she the type of she the type of broad every nigga every nigga in the DMV would go crazy for. Multiple. You know who you are. Some of some of you might not. Mm hmm. I don't give a fuck. This my life, nigga. I've been in a situation where I got the girl but I missed the bitch. And what I mean by that I got the girl that I missed the bitch is I got the girl in a situation, a girl that I really wanted, a girl that I've been pursuing, a girl that I've, I've, is, is, she's like a rival the way that I wanted to have her. And I've, I've got her in a situation where I have her in all the positions that I want. Nigga, nigga, and it's to the point that everything escalated so good that I, you know, I slept with this girl. I messed with her. We fucked. We did, we did the whole nine yards. And I wanted her and, and just the way my life was set up and how certain shit went down and just cause everybody life different. You see, when you doing this dating shit, you got to understand you are catching people at different moments of their life. Sometimes you go through a grief stage in your life where you're going through a lot of grief. You know, motherfuckers dying and you you know you can't you can't think straight 
or, or, or shit just going wrong and then you meet this person but you know that if this person was in different circumstances as to where your life is right now but you know if you met them when you were more happy instead of being in this more fucked up time in your life that they would have been the one for you these are what we call lifetimes you see where where bitches get they self wrong and where they fuck up in this game is they look for niggas to just come to them because that is their game. Nigga, as a man, you are the initiator of a lot of shit that goes down. That's why I tell you to take action on certain shit. So what you have to understand is that, you know, when this when this when this when this girl meets you, you're meeting her at certain points in her life. This is what we call a lifetime. This is what we call being with somebody in a lifetime, but it's a lifetime that you foresee that you didn't see, but you can see the end game in being with somebody in this lifetime. I don't know if none of this shit is making sense to y'all niggas, but anybody that fuck with me and get what I'm talking about, hey, hey man, we can chop it up. See? So when you smash somebody, you've smashed them in a lifetime. You know, a relationship is just the first date reoccurring over and 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 over again. So if you make it an effort to have an extravagant first date where both of you guys can have fun. As a man, you have fun where you're getting game out of the situation. As a woman, she has fun being honest and being real with you. And then as a man, you get the upper hand of leading the whole dating situation by saying, listen, man. I'm fucking having fun with this game that I'm learning. But at the same time, she having fun with who she's being herself with me. Because I done got all the information out here. So I know that she's being honest. I can be the honest me with her. Because she's being honest with me. Because I know that the shit that I'm using is more far ahead of what she's talking about. So the shit that I'm using is more far ahead of what she's talking about. My answer going to be realer than hers. So when my answer realer than hers, now she being the honest her with me. And when you take that, now, see, this is real game. I'm giving y'all the game right now. Qualification. Fuck with me. It's young Cuda. Email me at playertalk at gmail.com. But what I'm saying is that, you know, now, y'all being real with each other. This is how you find yourself being real. And this is how you find yourself really knowing who fuck with you and who don't. This game is a joy watching this dynamic playing out. So, you have to understand, man. I found myself in many times where I got the girl, but I missed the bitch. I slept with her. One of the best sex I've ever had, and it just didn't work out that we followed up with each other. It just didn't work out, you know. People got their circumstances in their life, man. So you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you hit, but you didn't get the relationship. See what I'm saying? Do you hear what I'm saying? But when you guys qualify each other, you're looking for interest and you're looking to see if you fit each other's criteria. But this is not to scare you from qualification because, you know, a lot of times the initial attraction overrides all of this. Initially, when you're attracted to somebody, this will override every single thing. So, you know, if you're attracted to this person... You know, you have to create what's called sexual tension. And sexual tension comes from this attraction. This attraction equals into sexual attention. See what I'm saying? I'm going to show you how you can create sexual tension. Oops, I mean sexual intentions. I mean sexual tensions. <laughs> but qualification is the last stage that you have to do before you can build and for you know... Before you can build and enter comfort. This is where you get to know her. Qualification is if you look at how I look at it. When you get a bit further on in the game. You'll see that you can get a head start on building comfort. When you jump into qualification. Because you see you have to understand the six steps that I'm saying. When you when you get advanced in the game you already know what you're jumping into. So you have a head start on the game knowing what you're jumping into if that mean, makes sense so in the beginning you'll understand 
approaching. You're learning how to approach. But when you get advanced in approaching and you're understanding the dynamics and the aspects of approaching, what it'll make you do is get more into approaching. And when you get more into approaching, then you're getting more into transitioning. And then when you start getting more into transitioning, then you'll get more into building attraction. And when you get more into building attraction, because you, you're you observing each step and you know how to get the head start in it. Doing like a like a like we're talking about cars. I'm teaching you how to redline in your shit. If you ever drove a stick shift car, you will understand the aspects of redlining and getting the jump on the next gear than the next man is who you're racing so you can get a little bit faster than him. You're having perfect shifts and your timing is really good. So you 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 know what I'm saying you you utilizes the you utilize the most of each gear. You got gear one, gear two, gear three, gear four, gear five, and gear six. And if you drive in a real exotic joint, you got gear seven. So qualification is how you look at it, you know, a little bit further in the game. You gotta see how you get a head start on building comfort. And then when you build comfort, you gotta see how you get a head start on qualifying. And then when you qualify, you have to ask her deep, open-ended questions. And now, at this point in the interaction, she's paying particular attention to what you're saying because you've banged out all the levels. See, when you approach properly and transition properly, start a conversation, build attraction, and get in the qualification, she is paying specific attention to what you're saying, and you get her in rare form because she's being the real her. This is why I tell you, man, you need to focus on being the exception. In a lot of situations, you are the exception. It's self-conviction at its finest. So check this out. When she choosing on you and giving signs that she's fucking with you, you got to know how to learn how to switch gears. You have a six-step method, nigga. I have... Giving you a sports car and challenged you to write it down. And I am telling you about the gears and when to redline and when to switch. And y'all treating me like a side bitch. Like you're not getting game from me. But I concur. When she choosing on you, you have to express your curiosity with her. But some of y'all are newbies. So y'all not going to do that. You're going to tread lightly. With what she's doing and saying. Because you're watching this dynamic. That I'm telling you unfold. See in this game. I'm just really describing to you. The dynamic. And the hard work that you have to do. But you're not willing to put in the work. If you slip up with what I'm telling you. And you you know you'll end up. You'll be in a situation where you end up paying. Like I said, with a woman, it's easy to go from paying to being charged. And being charged is way different from paying. Which is, you know, willingly being charged. It's like a penalty. Ask her what she does for fun. Ask her where she's traveled to. Ask her what are her pet peeves. Ask her what's the last book she read. Ask her was she going, you know, if she was to go to sleep tonight and wake up anywhere else in the world, where would it be? Or you can jump into seduction. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to jump into seduction. You got to be like, look, what's a gorgeous, beautiful, sexy little thing like you doing single while we're having this deep ass conversation? And see what she says. Well, you can ask her, what type of niggas do you... Go for, and then you clown her and tease her on her answer and take up a, a superior position and become the exception and be like, look, well, you tripping because I got, you know, we got something right here right now. And watch what she do. We're going to get more deep on building comfort. This was the qualification, man. Building comfort is coming up next. This is the qualification show. Yo, catch me this Sunday, man. We're going to build some comfort and we're going to talk about the intricacies of building comfort so that you don't get caught in a friend zone. It's the kid. Get at me, man. We out, man. We about to get into the motherfucking mix, man. We about to get into some real shit. So, you know what I'm saying? 
We gon' Y'all motherfucker, man. We man. Listen, man. Email me at playertalk8 at gmail.com. Because a lot of y'all motherfuckers is slow. Etail me. <laughs> I said etail. E- email me at playertalk8 at gmail.com, man. Let's get into the mix, man. Shout out to my booski. Shout outs to my baby. You know what I'm saying? Let's get into the mix, man. Sweet November. Let's get it. Send my baby Sizwap, aka Scissor. She on my bucket list, man. Let's get it. It's the kid, young Cooter, man. Email me at playertalk8 at gmail.com. Definitely listen to all the words in this song because we lacing you with the game. It's the kid, young Cooter, Player Talk Radio. Let's get it. Yeah. 